Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to our pre-release primer for M15. We'll go over quickly what the pre-release consists of and then dive right into which colors you should be looking out for. This is going to be fun. For almost two years now, pre-releases have been run pretty much the same way. You're going to be given five packs of M15. Along with this, you'll also receive a seeded pack of cards. This pack will include the promo of the color you chose, a rare in the color you chose, and an assortment of commons and uncommons, which should be skewed towards your pre-release color. If you haven't figured it out yet, the color you choose is probably one you're going to be playing. You take all your packs, open them, and build a deck out of what you have in front of you. There's no trading or passing with other players. It's all you. You build the best 40 card deck you can and you're ready to battle. Let's talk colors. One of the most frequently asked questions when it comes to which color is the best is which color has the most financial value? If this were any other set besides a core set, I'd gladly give you a breakdown of where the money is, but because this is a core set, financial value is out the window. Of course, you have the big money cards like Jace, Nissa, Johnny, and Garrick, but you can't get walkers in the seated pack, so that's out of the question. After you take those out, the only mythics you can get are the souls. Of these, new Phyrexia is the most expensive one, so how do you guys? Once you leave the Mythic Rare slot, there's basically nothing that stands out. Court of Calling is pre-ordering at $15 on Star City Games with a ton left in stock. After that, you have a few cards at $10, but at that point, there's really no point in trying to pick a color based on monetary value. If you're dead set on picking a color for financial gain, I'd suggest either waiting for cons or picking green, I guess? With that out of the way, let's do this. We'll start, as always, with white. Resolute Archangel, 7 mana for a 4-4 flyer. In limited, flyers are always desirable, mostly any cost. 7 mana really stretches the word mostly. Her ability is what makes white tempting. Being able to reset your life total late game is outrageously powerful. The fact that you can do that with her and get a 4-4 flyer out of it is pretty sweet. Even though she's expensive, she's decently powerful. When looking at the rest of the white cards, you see a lot of what you've always seen. Cheeky removal and devouring light, pillar of light, and kind of oppressive rays. You also get the classic mid-range flyers in Geist of the Moors and Razorfoot Griffin. I will say the quality of rares for white this time around is impressively high. Avacyn, Soul of Theros, Spectra Ward, and Spirit Bonds are all stupidly powerful and limited. This is especially true with the Soul of Theros. One activation from him and it's probably game over. You have some decent spells, decent creatures, and decent interaction with the opponent. If it weren't for the power the rares provide, I'd be significantly less impressed with white, but again, these rares are game changing. This is going to hurt. Mercurial Pretender is not good for this pre-release. You can only copy your creatures, which opens you up way too much to removal. 5 mana is a lot to spend on nothing. If it copied any creature, it would be significantly better, but it can't, so it's not so good. As far as rare quality is concerned, you're basically getting something awesome or terrible. Aether Spouts, Chasm Skulker, Master of Predicaments, and the Frog Party are all great for limited. The problem is that Chief Engineer, Jalira, and Stormtide Leviathan are probably going to be busts. The Solar Ravnica is perfectly fine as a 6-6 six, six flyer for 6, but his ability is far less relevant than some of the other souls. Where blue really shines is where you'd expect it to, disruption and removal. Chrono Stutter, Encrust, Frost Links, Into the Void, Peel from Reality, Turn to Frog, Void Snare. This is a long list of annoying blue cards. This doesn't even mention the card draw power and divination in Jace's ingenuity. Plus, it's worth mentioning that Paragon of Gathering Mist is one of the more powerful Paragons, if not the most powerful. Flying for one mana is gross. I'm obviously biased, but people see the pre-release promo and think blue is garbage. I'm telling you, it makes an insane support color. If you're a blue player, you can play blue at this pre-release and feel just as comfortable as any other. Black brings us Indulgent Tormentor. After much consideration, I think this is the best promo. I don't care that it has three toughness. Your opponents aren't all going to play all serrate and lightning strike. When this is in play, your opponents have to make a choice each turn. Unlike the tribute mechanic of Theros Black, all these choices are bad. Sure, they'll pick the one that's least painful for them, but this is limited. Losing through life is terrible, sacrificing a creature is terrible, and letting you draw a card is terrible. That's just how it is. The Tormentor presents a choice that your opponent cannot hope to choose correctly. There is no right, just varying degrees of wrong. 
Black is represented weirdly in this set. The first thing I'm sure you've noticed is that there isn't nearly as much removal as normal. That is true, which is hard to ignore, but it doesn't mean that there's none. Crippling Blight, Flesh to Dust, Stab Wound, and Ulcerate make up a decent package. It's not amazing, but decent. Black Light Blue also has some really hit or miss rares. Cruel Sadist, Necromancer, Stockpile, and Stay in the Mine all leave a lot to be desired. Meanwhile, Obnixilis and the Soul of Innistrad are just fine and super bomby. The Soul in particular is pretty sweet since its ability essentially provides you with insane card advantage. Remember though, besides the Soul and Obnix, you'll probably be disappointed with most of their rares except maybe Waste Knot, but that's only if you open a bunch of Mine Rots and Black Cats, it doesn't seem reliable. Just saying. While this does look bad, Black does have power. Child of Night, Gravedigger, and Necrogen Scudder are all strong creatures. Even Nightfire Giant, Rot Feaster Maggot, and Zathrid Slyblade have their uses. Plus, at the end of the day, Paragon of Open Graves grants Death Touch. Sure, it's three men and you have to tap him, but Death Touch makes all trades favorable. It's the more you know. What I'm saying is that black is a weird color. It's hard to gauge where its real power level is. The promo is broken, the removal is there, but not as plentiful as usual, and the creature base is pretty strong compared to other colors. All things considered, black is a pretty balanced color, I'd say. Plus, let's be real, if I open more than one sign in blood, I'm going mono black everything. So, like, the dream. I... Moving on to red, Siege Dragon is a good card. Who would have thunk it? 7 mana is a lot, but a 5-5 flyer should cost a lot. His destroy walls ability probably won't matter all that much, but his second ability definitely will. It's what makes him so good. If you can untap with the dragon, dealing 2 damage to all ground units will make combat a lot easier and way more profitable for you. Sure, by the time that happens it's late game, but turning a 6-6 into a 6-4 until end of turn is a big deal. I think out of all the promos, this one is probably the most underrated. When we dive into the rest of red, things do not look so good on the rare front. Aggressive Mining, Crucible of Fire, and Kirkashonaki Ancient require strategies to be built around them. In most cases, they're dead rares for you. Burning Anger and Goblin Kaboomis can be good, but they're also kind of awkward. That leaves you with Hoarding Dragon, Goblin Rabble Master, and the Soul of Chandelar. Don't get me wrong, these cards are great, like, really strong. The soul's ability can be devastating on first activation. I'm just hurt so bad by the other red rares that need specific synergies to shine. While the situation may look bleak, the power of red in M15 comes from its commons and uncommons. I stick by the fact that Altic Bloodseeker is an absolute monster. Beyond that, Borderland Marauder, Generator Servant, Kurt Chieftain, and Torchfiend are all easily playable. You're also given a variety of removal and disruption to choose from. Blast Fire Bolt, Circle of Flame, Cone of Flame, Heat Ray, Lightning Strike, Stoke the Flames, these are all playable in relevant strategies. Here's how I see red. The creature quality is high, the spell quality is high, the rare quality is not very high at all, but the soul and promo are both bonkers. At the end of the day, a lot of people are counting red out. I don't think you should. This color seems to be pretty fired up. Finally, we make it to green. Phyto Titan is an interesting plan elemental. Six mana is a lot for a 7-2, even with a recursion ability. The fact that he comes back tapped also means that he's super slow. Keep this in mind. Even with all that said, he's a magnet for removal spells and profitable blocks. He's not the worst promo, he's not the best promo, but he's functional. When he's in play untapped, you'll love every second of it. Now that we have a pattern down, let's take a look at the rest of the rares. Court of Calling, it's playable. Genesis Hydra, it's a Hydra, so it's playable. Hornet Nest, Death Touch Bees, heck yes, it's playable. Hornet Queen, three green is a little tough, but it flies, has Death Touch, and creates four insects that also fly and have Death Touch, so it's definitely playable. Clonian Twin Grove, there won't be that many non-basics, so you can expect this to be at least a 4-4, like maybe it's moderately playable. Life's Legacy, card advantage, pure and simple, play it. Soul of Zendikar, has reach, that's alright, creates 3-3 three, three beasts, playable. Yisan the Wanderer Bard, tutors for your creatures, in limited, it's super playable. Let's review what just happened, I went through every single rare in green, they are all playable. The one that I would consider the worst, Colonian Twin Grove, is still playable in any predominantly green deck. This color is dumb. When you open your seeded pack, you're basically guaranteed to get a rare you can play in addition to your Phyto Titan. This is just, 
This is so dumb. It's so dumb. Just for the heck of it, let's look at commons and uncommons. Ancient Silverback, Elvish Mystic, and Netcaster Spider are all top tier creatures for the pre-release. Two of those are commons. If you add in, you know, the just good creatures, Living Totem, Siege Worm, and Wall of Mulch, you're looking at a pretty deep creature pool to work with. After you realize how great the creatures are, you'll see there's a lot of backup for them. Gather Courage, Hunt the Weak, Ranger's Guile, Restock, Titanic Growth. This color is easily the deepest of any color in M15. I want to make things more even, but it's just not fair, honestly. The only thing that green lacks is hard removal, which is something it's supposed to lack, so can you really hold that against it? You want my verdict? Indulgent Tormentor is the best promo. Soul of Theros is the best soul you can get. Green has the safest and most consistent rares. Green also has the highest quality creatures. Blue has the most disruption by a billion miles, and red seems to have the most hard removal. With all that said, if you're someone who will play whichever color is objectively the best, I think the choice has to be green, but I wouldn't say that green is so much better that black players should play it, or blue players or anyone else for that matter. Green is super strong, that's true, but I'm going to be playing blue like a champ because that's what I know and that's what I'm good at. I disrupt things. It's what I do. If you set things on fire, don't play trees. That doesn't even make sense. Keep playing red. The difference in power between red and green is not that high. The same could be said for any two colors. The point is that you should really pick the color you want to play. I guarantee you'll do better in a color you're comfortable with than the one you think is the strongest. Personal experience has taught me that time and again, trust me. How are you guys feeling about the pre-release? Has this video helped you out at all? If you're still wavering, leave a comment down below and I'll choose for you. It's, it's what I do, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Anyways, remember to subscribe below for the latest and most reliable magic, the gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.